Mayonnaise is a household staple for millions of people around the world. Its creamy texture and savory, slightly tangy flavor have made it one of the most popular condiments globally. From sandwiches to potato salads, dips, and even marinades, mayonnaise finds its way into many meals, often in larger quantities than we realize. But what happens when someone with diabetes tastes even a small amount of it? While it may seem like a trivial indulgence, especially when compared to sweets or sugary beverages, mayonnaise deserves much closer scrutiny. At a surface level, it's made from seemingly harmless ingredients, egg yolks, oil, vinegar, or lemon juice. Before we continue, I'd like to tell you about Daya Salon, a powerful blend of 13 natural ingredients, each carefully selected for their proven ability to support healthy blood sugar levels, enhance insulin sensitivity, and promote overall wellness. You can read more on diacelon.com. Traditional mayonnaise has little to no sugar and no obvious carbohydrate content, which is why many assume it's blood sugar friendly. However, for people with diabetes, it's not only about sugar, it's about how various nutrients affect insulin sensitivity, inflammation, digestion, and energy regulation. Even a small, seemingly innocent taste of mayonnaise can have hidden physiological consequences, particularly when it becomes a recurring part of one's eating habits. What we often overlook is that chronic conditions like diabetes are built and worsened by repeated small decisions rather than occasional large ones. One taste doesn't make or break your health, but it's the patterns that emerge afterward that shape your future. When mayonnaise is consumed, the body initiates a chain of digestive and hormonal responses, even if the quantity is minimal. While carbohydrates and sugars tend to cause immediate spikes in blood glucose, fats, such as those found in mayonnaise, behave differently, often with delayed but significant consequences. As mayonnaise moves through your digestive tract, it doesn't just pass quietly. Instead, it's broken down by lipase enzymes into fatty acids and glycerol, which then enter the bloodstream and can affect numerous metabolic pathways. Fat slows down gastric emptying, the rate at which food leaves the stomach and enters the small intestine, which means that if you eat mayonnaise with carbs, your blood sugar may spike hours later instead of right after the meal. This phenomenon, known as the second meal effect, or delayed hyperglycemia, is particularly problematic for diabetics who time their medications or insulin doses around expected digestion patterns. A single taste of mayonnaise may not seem like it could trigger all this, but even small amounts of fat can alter the digestive timeline and delay the body's glucose absorption. Furthermore, high-fat foods can blunt insulin sensitivity, meaning that your body has a harder time responding to glucose when it finally does arrive in the bloodstream. Over time, these metabolic detours add up, impairing blood sugar control, increasing fat storage, and placing stress on the pancreas, which already works over time in diabetics. It's not about fear, it's about precision and awareness in managing a complex metabolic condition. It's also essential to understand that not all fats are equal, and that's where mayonnaise raises further red flags. The majority of commercial mayonnaise products are made with refined seed oils such as soybean, canola, or corn oil, oils that are extremely high in omega-6 fatty acids. While omega-6s are technically essential fats, our modern diets tend to overload on them, especially in processed foods, while being deficient in anti-inflammatory omega-3s found in fatty fish or flaxseed. The resulting imbalance creates a pro-inflammatory state in the body, which is now recognized as a driver of numerous chronic illnesses, including insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. Chronic inflammation affects the function of insulin receptors, making it harder for cells to absorb glucose from the bloodstream. Even if that one taste of mayonnaise doesn't cause immediate inflammation, it contributes to a broader imbalance if mayonnaise or similar fat sources are consumed frequently. For people who eat sandwiches daily or frequently use creamy dressings and dips, this adds up fast. On top of that, these processed oils are often heated and chemically treated during manufacturing, making them more likely to oxidize, and oxidized fats have been shown to damage cellular structures and further impair metabolic regulation. And this isn't just a biochemical theory. In real-world diabetic patients, high omega-6 intake has been linked with increased insulin resistance, poor lipid profiles, 
and a greater risk of cardiovascular disease, all of which are common complications of diabetes. So, one taste? It may be small, but it fits into a much bigger, riskier puzzle. Let's dig deeper into how mayonnaise fits into broader dietary habits, because it's rarely, if ever, consumed in isolation. Most people eat mayonnaise as part of a meal or snack that contains refined carbohydrates, processed meats, or other high glycemic ingredients. Think about the average sandwich, white bread, deli meat, cheese, mayonnaise, or a fast food burger where the mayo is smeared under a white bun and layered with fatty meats and sugars and ketchup. When you take a bite of that meal, or even just a taste of the mayo during cooking, your body is preparing for a complex metabolic challenge. The fat in the mayo delays gastric emptying, so the sugar from the bread or sauces gets absorbed more slowly, often peaking two to three hours later instead of immediately. This might sound like a benefit, but it actually makes blood sugar harder to predict and manage. Many diabetics monitor their glucose one to two hours after eating, so they might think a meal is safe, only to experience an unexpected spike much later. Additionally, the insulin response is blunted in the presence of large amounts of fat, which may lead to a longer period of elevated glucose after a high-fat meal. Even more subtly, fatty foods like mayo can activate hormonal signals that increase hunger and reduce the body's natural satiety cues, meaning you're more likely to overeat, especially when paired with calorie-dense carbs and proteins. In this way, that one small taste of mayonnaise is part of a broader chain of behaviors and physiological reactions that, over time, can lead to weight gain, increased insulin resistance, and less control over food choices. It's a domino effect, and every domino, no matter how small, plays a role. There's also an overlooked psychological layer at play. Many commercial mayonnaise brands include ingredients far beyond eggs and oil. Think sugar, preservatives, natural flavors, emulsifiers, and even colorings. Some light or low-fat versions actually contain more sugar or starch to make up for lost flavor. These additives can subtly affect your metabolism, your brain chemistry, and your eating behavior. For instance, sugar or high fructose ingredients, even in trace amounts, can stimulate dopamine release in the brain's reward system, creating a pleasant feedback loop that increases the urge to eat more later. The creamy mouthfeel of mayonnaise is also engineered to be hyperpalatable, meaning it's designed to light up pleasure centers in your brain, making you crave more fatty, salty, or rich foods in the future. One taste might not trigger a binge, but it can reopen neural pathways associated with overeating, especially for people already struggling with food discipline or emotional eating. This becomes even more dangerous in diabetes, where consistent blood sugar levels rely heavily on routine, discipline, and careful food selection. If one taste leads to one tablespoon, which leads to one sandwich, which leads to one day off track, that's how chronic blood sugar imbalances take root. The issue isn't about demonizing food, but about recognizing its role in both body and mind. Taste, craving, memory, and biology are deeply linked, and mayonnaise, with its luxurious texture and engineered flavor, is a perfect example of how a small choice can influence a much bigger behavioral pattern. And now we come to the issue of long-term consequences, especially in relation to heart health. Diabetes already puts individuals at a significantly increased risk of cardiovascular disease, stroke, and high blood pressure. Foods high in unhealthy fats, like many commercial mayonnaise brands, can exacerbate these risks by raising LDL, bad cholesterol, lowering HDL, good cholesterol, and promoting arterial plaque buildup. Over time, these changes can lead to atherosclerosis, a condition in which arteries harden and narrow, restricting blood flow. This doesn't happen from one bite, of course, but patterns are what matter. Most people don't measure mayonnaise precisely. They dollop, spread, or spoon it out liberally, often multiple times per week. And because it doesn't raise blood sugar immediately, it flies under the radar of many diabetic food trackers but every tablespoon adds about 100 calories and 10 grams of fat, and these calories often come on top of other dense foods. It becomes a calorie surplus problem, a weight gain problem, and eventually a lipid management problem. What starts as just a taste 
becomes a consistent intake of problematic fats. The irony is, many people trying to manage their blood sugar cut carbs only to overcompensate with high-fat, low-carb foods like mayonnaise, thinking they're safe. But without balance, this swap can be just as harmful over the long haul. Another important but often ignored factor is how mayonnaise interacts with your gut microbiome. The trillions of bacteria living in your intestines that influence everything from digestion to immunity and even brain function. Emerging research shows a clear link between gut health and insulin resistance. High-fat, low-fiber diets, especially those rich in processed fats like the ones found in commercial mayonnaise, can disrupt the diversity and balance of gut bacteria. When bad bacteria outnumber beneficial strains, the intestinal lining can become compromised, leading to what scientists call leaky gut or intestinal permeability. This allows small particles like lipopolysaccharides, LPS, toxic byproducts of bacterial metabolism, to enter the bloodstream. Once in circulation, LPS triggers systemic inflammation, which worsens insulin sensitivity and leads to blood sugar dysregulation. This entire process starts in the gut, and one of the key drivers of poor gut health is an excess of industrial seed oils and a lack of plant-based fiber. So even that tiny taste of mayo, if consumed regularly, becomes part of a larger trend that starves your good bacteria while feeding the ones that increase inflammation. It's another example of how dietary fats don't just sit in your bloodstream. They shape the ecosystem of your body on a microscopic level, especially if you're diabetic and already dealing with impaired glucose control. So in conclusion, while one taste of mayonnaise might seem trivial, an afterthought, a fleeting indulgence, it's rarely just that simple, especially for someone living with diabetes. Food is never just food, it's information, chemistry, emotion, and habit. When you consume even a small amount of mayonnaise, you're engaging with a product that impacts your metabolism, your gut health, your hormonal signaling, and even your mental associations around food. And while it may not cause a dramatic blood sugar spike in the way a donut or soda might, its effects are more subtle and in many ways more insidious. It can disrupt your body's ability to regulate insulin. It can cause delayed digestion and unpredictable glucose readings. It can support inflammation that undermines your long-term metabolic stability. And when consumed regularly, even in small tastes, it can quietly tip the scales of health toward imbalance. One of the most dangerous myths in nutrition is that just a little doesn't matter. In truth, chronic conditions like diabetes aren't shaped by dramatic moments. They're shaped by consistent, invisible choices. A small taste here a careless portion there, and soon your carefully managed plan starts to drift. Mayonnaise, because it doesn't scream sugar or carb, often flies under the radar of diabetic awareness. It disguises itself as harmless. But the truth is, it trains your palate to crave richer, denser foods. It fuels a pattern of energy-dense, nutrient-poor eating. And because it's often consumed in habitual contexts, like fast food, processed meals, or creamy dips. It also connects you to other risk factors without you even realizing it. So the real risk isn't in the one bite. The real risk is in not noticing how many times that one bite repeats over the weeks and months. The goal is not perfection, it's progress. It's about paying attention to what your body's telling you. Not just after a blood sugar reading, but in how you feel, how you recover, how you sleep, and how your energy lasts throughout the day. You deserve to feel good, to live with clarity, to have your energy back, and to feel confident about the choices you're making, not confused or misled by marketing or tradition. Mayonnaise may be small, but your health is not, so honor it, take it seriously, and make choices that support the version of yourself you're working to become, one taste at a time.